Welcome back to MTG Bridgeting, your channel for all things magic. In today's EDH Commander Thursday video, we are returning to our Up and Up series where we unfortunately take Morif and the Boundless and Human Legends and we overthrow our beloved Changeling Commander. <laughs> Hello and welcome back fans of MTG Burgeoning and welcome back to another installment of MTG Burgeoning's Up and Up series where we take a pre-existing deck tech that we've talked about on the channel and we update and upgrade it. And it comes with heavy hearts and, and much hesitation and sadness that we must replace Mora from the Boundless as the general of our Human Legend Commander deck. Through extensive gameplay results... Is Sika, God of the Tree, just does a better job with the deck than Morathin the Boundless does. And if you missed when we talked about this in the last time the Human Legends were in the Up and Up series, you can click on any of the links below and you can review those videos. So unfortunately, Morathin, as the commander of our Human Legends deck, which oh, I should have had it out there already. Got it right here. There's our Human Legends deck. Morathin is out, and the Sika God of the Tree is in. Now, in the last installment of the Up and Up series with the Human Legends, we talked about how if a Sika were in the 99, it would replace Shabraz the Sky Shark, and then we left it up to the community to decide whether or not it would stay in the 99, replacing Shabraz, or come out of the 99 and replace Morifin as the general. And through a ton of gameplay, I can attest that Asika is better for what this deck does than Morphin is. So, again, unfortunately, Morphin is coming out, and Asika, God of the Tree, is going in. New commander for this deck in a day that will live in infamy here at MTG Burgeoning. Now, because we built our Human Legend deck with Morphin as its general in a particular way, therefore trying to accentuate his mana cost reduction of white, blue, black, red, green, there are some cards that, well, they no longer are viable in this deck now that we're taking it into a different, a different path with the Sika. And the first card that's going to come out is going to be Jota, our Archmage Eternal. With Morphin and Jota in play together, every human legend spell that or every human spell that we had in our hand, we would have been able to cast for free because Morphin would have reduced the cost by white, blue, black, red, green, and Jota allows us to pay any of those creature spells by, by allows us to cast any of those creature spells by paying white, blue, black, red, green, therefore creating free casting of humans throughout the entirety of those two creatures being on the battlefield together. As Morophon is no longer the general, there really isn't a place for Jota because there are other humans that could offer more. There are other human legends that can offer more to the deck than Jota can. And Jota's replacement will also bend some of the deck building restrictions that we had first put in place when we were constructing this Morophon human legend build many, many moons ago. And one of those restrictions was there was going to be no human legends with more than two colorless mana in the mana cost. Well, we are bending that because to replace Jota, we are going to include Kenrith the Returned King. For four and a white, you know Kenny, he can do it all. He's a 5-5 five, five legendary human. He has five very, very versatile and, and very just, just awesome abilities. For a red, all creatures gain trample and haste. One in a green, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Two in a white, target player gains five life. Three in a blue, target player draws a card. And four in a black, target put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control. Yes, Kenny does install an element of politics to the game. However, more importantly, he's going to help solidify the humans by allowing them to get bigger, be hasty, getting them out of the graveyard. Kenny will do more in this deck paired with the Sika than Jota would have easily. So that that change was not a difficult one. Jota out, 
Kenrith the Returned King in. As we are going more streamlined, thinking about how we have to cast our creature spells now, it seemed like it would be a good idea to further update the mana base. We want to add some additional lands that can give one of any color, and we want to add the number, we want to include, we want to add more lands to the land base. Running just 35 lands under the precipice of we're going to have a situation in which we're not going to ever have to really tap mana for the casting of our creature spells because of Morrifin, because of Joda, and because of cards like Herald's Horn and Urza's Incubator. Well, that's no longer the game plan, so now we have to make room for some additional lands to come in. So some creatures and spells are coming out in order to make way for four lands. And the first human legend coming out is going to be Hannah. In all the games I've played, not one time was there ever a, um, an instance in which I needed to return an artifact or enchantment card from my graveyard to my hand. Either I needed to do it, or I had the ability to do it. So Hannah seems like it's just taking up a spot. She's only 1-2, and if we're not recurring art any artifacts or enchantments from our graveyard, she really isn't doing much more. So Hannah is... It's kind of an easy creature to bring out. Taking Hannah's spot is going to be a copy of Mana Confluence. Tap, pay a life, add one mana of any color to our mana pool. So again, this fits the bill of trying to fix the mana and increase the number of lands so that we can cast these spells without having to worry about the mana cost of them. Without having to worry about the different colors, because we're playing a five-color deck. Uh, next creature coming out is going to be Alicia who smiles at death and this ended up becoming a numbers game and for Alicia to be effective to she's a 3-2 first strike for two in a red but to utilize her other ability of tapping any two combination of Orzhov colors we can return a creature card with power two or less from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped and attacking the numbers game ends up claiming Alicia's spot here in the deck because there are just not enough creatures that could tr that Alicia could bring out of the graveyard in order to justify her continued presence in the deck. Particularly if one of those creatures, Hannah, there on the left, is already coming out and Kenny is going in, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to keep Alicia in when we can find a better way to strengthen the overall deck by including some more lands. So with Alicia coming out, unclaimed territories going in. This is a very depowered form of Cavern of Souls without the counterspell protection. Comes into play, we choose a creature type which will be humans, we tap for a colorless, or we tap for one mana of any color that we can spend to cast just a human. Okay, so unclaimed territory will help us to cast these creature spells. Alicia out, unclaimed territory in. Next card coming out, this is going to be a sorcery spell. We are going to take out Uncage the Menagerie. For X and 2 green, it was a sorcery that allowed us to search our library for up to X creature cards with different names that have that each have a converted mana cost of X, reveal them, and put them into our hand. So as we first installed this card into the deck, the goal was to get X to be 3 or 4, most likely 4, so that we can bring cards like Saskia the Unyielding and Brea and you know creatures that we would be able to cast for free with Morophin on the battlefield. However, now that we're not in that particular deck theme, it just makes more sense to bring Uncage the Menagerie out to, you know, we weaken a little bit of our, we weaken a little bit of our tutor package in order to strengthen the overall deck by including a land that, let's be honest, Asika and the Prismatic Bridge, is they're going to be targets. And including a copy of Command Beacon, will allow us to get the Sika out of the command zone if it's been cast two, three, maybe four times already. And in so doing, we can bring it to our hand and then cast it just for the one, two green if we need to, or as the prismatic bridge for one of every color. So uncage the menagerie out, command beacon in. This this installment of the Up and Up series has been a little bit of, a little challenging because in previous versions, we've been able to identify one card and then find a card that's better than that card, kind of like a card for card replacement. But here with the pre-existing deck where we're kind of shifting away from a predetermined deck archetype that we set out and built, 
trying to match up card for card is a little more difficult because we're kind of taking the deck in a completely opposite direction than Morrowind was going to have it. So some of these cards are not going to line up and they're going to kind of stray. They're going to kind of go outside the lines a little bit in what we've been doing in past installments. However, it is for the betterment of the deck. I can attest to that through the extensive gameplay that I've had with the Sika as the commander, as well as Morrowind. One more swap. Coming out will be Door of Destinies, an artifact for four. When it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, which would have been humans. And whenever we cast a spell of the chosen type, we put a charge counter on Door of Destinies. And creatures we control the chosen type get plus one, plus one for each charge counter on Door of Destinies. This is coming out because with the deck kind of shifting its focus to getting the Prismatic Bridge in play, allowing it to trigger and getting creatures from our library into play each turn, those creatures are not being cast, therefore they're not going to trigger Door of Destinies, and then it just doesn't make a lot of sense to keep this card in the deck where the majority of our creatures are going to be coming into play, not through casting. It made a, it made a great pairing with Morophon and with Joda, but with both of those creatures coming out, Door of Destinies seems weaker, and I think bringing out Door of Destinies will make the deck better by including a copy of Reliquary Tower. No maximum hand size, tap for a colorless mana. There are times in which, particularly because we're going to include Kenrith the Returned King, there may be instances in which we exceed our maximum hand size. And for me, I don't like discarding those cards, I want them in my hand. So including a copy of Reliquary Tower to finalize and round out the 39 land land base, I think that's the best way to do it for this deck. And folks, ladies and gentlemen, that's the up and up installment here with Morophon. It seeds to a Sika in a day that will live in infamy here at MTG Burgeoning. Sunday may be fun day, but on EDH Commander Thursday, a Sika won out. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.